Hello there and welcome to Space Lab. This tutorial is all about automation within Space Lab. This video is part of a larger ongoing series about Space Lab and 3D audio production. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can stay up to date with the latest news, tips and tricks. Now before diving in, I'd like to mention one very important thing. When you check the automation parameters of Space Lab, you're going to notice a parameter called do not use. This dummy parameter is currently the only reliable way to tell the host that something in the plugin has changed and that the user should save the session. As the name suggests, please leave this one alone and do not use it. Data might be written there when automation is in latch or write mode and you change a parameter in Space Lab which is not enabled for automation. If that happens, just deactivate the automation lane. Now, in Space Lab, automation is handled in a different way than in most other plugins due to the vast number of parameters that you can automate. To make life easier and to also make it possible to automate groups of parameters together using just one automation curve, Space Lab offers a feature called Dynamic Automation. This feature requires you to first enable parameters for automation before they can become available in your host, and there's two ways to do this. The fast and easy way is to simply alt or option click on a control. For example, in Space Lab, reverb time is adjusted individually for nine frequency bands, and you can see that in the room character tab. So let's enable reverb time for automation by clicking either on the big knob or one of those nine faders. As you can see, the list in the automation tab just got a new item, a so-called lane group. A lane group can contain several lanes, each one representing a single parameter in the host. In this lane group, there's a field that says 1 to 9. These are the 9 host parameter indices on which the 9 bands of reverb time can be automated. On the Spatial EQ tab, Alt or Option clicking only works on the buttons because each band of the Spatial EQ is enabled for all 8 directions in space simultaneously. If you want to automate all bands of the Spatial EQ, just Alt or Option click the All button. To learn more about Spatial EQ automation, please watch the Spatial EQ tutorial. There's a link in the description. Snapshot automation can be activated by Alt or Option clicking on the Access button for the Snapshot tab. Check out our Snapshot tutorial for details on Snapshot automation. When working with source parameters, keep in mind that the automation affects the entire source, not just the individual objects within a source. Let's head over to the Sources view. Now we have two types of sources in our session. One type is positioned relative to the room via X, Y, and Z coordinates, and the other type is positioned in relation to the listener via azimuth, elevation, and distance. To learn more about the sources and their positioning, please watch the tutorial about sources and objects. Again, there's a link in the description. With the Source Type button, we can select which type of source we want to work with. When you select one type, the other type becomes inaccessible. Currently, room-related sources are selected, so let's select the source we want to automate. Let's Alt or Option click on the knob for the Y coordinate in the control column. Now let's change the source type to listener-related. Let's select the source we want to automate. And finally, Alt or Option click on Azimuth, and we are done. When we get back to the reverb view and have a look at the Automation tab, we can see that two lanes with three position parameters are now enabled. One of them has indices 10 to 12, and the other one 13 to 15. Now the name L2 and L3 for the lane groups were automatically created and are not very descriptive, so let's enter some better names. It's good practice to keep these names short because they're also shown in the host as well. Now, if you want to manually add new lane groups or change something among the already existing lane groups, there's a second way of enabling and managing parameters for automation. With the buttons on the left, you can add and delete lane groups. Let's create a new one. Click the Setup button on the newly created lane group to open the configuration window. Here you'll see that the configuration workflow goes from top to bottom. First, let's choose Source Mute for the parameter category. After that, you'll see the list of available parameters of this category on the left side. Parameters are available only if they are not yet automated on another lane. Now this list happens to contain mute source for every source in Space Lab, so let's add the kicks. And the last step is to assign a host parameter index to the lane group. The host parameter index refers to the audio parameters as they are seen in the host. Click OK to close the window and let's rename the lane group as well. Let's create another lane group and open the setup window again. 
For this, let's select mixing as the parameter category and add pre-delay as the parameter. Now you'll notice that once pre-delay is added, all other parameters disappear from the list because they cannot be automated together with pre-delay using one automation curve. Let's select a host parameter index and close. Let's have a look at the parameter list in the host. We can now automate these parameters by either drawing curves manually in the host or from Spacelab's interface using the on-screen controls. Okay, so let's switch on latch mode and write the automation from the GUI for reverb time and pre-delay. And now we can check to see if the automation was recorded correctly. Let's head over to the sources view for automating the source parameters. At the bottom of the control column, you'll find the automate button. When it is switched off, the controls in the panner are in normal editing mode and you can adjust the parameters without sending automation data to the host. Let's adjust the object positions for the source, which we will then automate. For automating from the GUI, we'll have to switch on the Automate button. Now that we're in automation mode, a drop-down with the source automation lanes and a small button with a Q on it becomes visible. With this drop-down, we can select which lane group we want to automate. Let's select the source's positions lane group. We can automate either by using the knobs in the control column or by dragging in the panner. Now, room-related sources can be automated by dragging in the top panner or the side panner. But listener-related sources can only be automated by dragging in the map view. Let's write automation by dragging in the top panner for our selection. Let's check if the automation was written correctly. Now let's switch over to listener related sources and map view. Now writing automation here works in the same way as positioning sources when you're not automating. By holding the shift key you can increase the speed and by holding the command or control key you can adjust the azimuth only. And finally by holding the alt or option key you can adjust only the elevation. Let's make some automations here. And let's check to see if that automation was written correctly. And after we finish automating from the GUI, we strongly recommend switching back to normal editing mode so that you don't accidentally overwrite your automation. In normal editing mode, you can still adjust individual values independently of the already written automation. For example, we can change the position of the objects in the automated group. And let's see what the automation does now.
as you can see, the relative position of the automated sources are maintained as well as the automation itself. Now the host parameters for the source position automation are in the center by default. This may be a problem if a group of objects you want to automate is in a corner, but you want to move them all over the room. We can illustrate this by dragging one of the objects from the sources, which is not yet automated to the lower left corner. Now let's enable the position of that source for automation, switch on the automate button and try to move the source around the whole room. As you can see, the object can only be moved around a limited space, not over the entire room. To compensate for that problem, the small button with the Q on it from the lane group dropdown opens a window where you can adjust audio parameters to have an optimal value for automating afterwards. The values here should resemble the center position of the object group that you want to automate. Let's move the objects around again to see if that compensation worked. Now you can adjust the objects to be moved around the whole room while being in automation mode. This correction should be done before starting the automation so that you have the ideal starting point. If you don't start with the optimal values, your automation ranges might be limited. Similar adjustments are also possible for the spread and the wet dry knobs. Now we can also automate mute from the Spacelab GUI, but let's draw the curve in the host instead. Since we're drawing the curve in the host, there's no need to switch on the automate button. This is only if you want to write automation from the GUI of Spacelab, which we're not going to be doing here. Let's verify that this worked. As you can see, the curve is not binary and does not just step between on and off as one would expect from a parameter such as mute. This is because most hosts do not react dynamically to changing the stepping of a parameter as it is done by the dynamic automation feature of Spacelab. And one more thing to mention, in Pro Tools you can see that the host parameters are numbered. That is currently necessary for dynamic automation due to a bug in Pro Tools. Due to this bug, Pro Tools doesn't update the names of parameters which are already automated, but you can still distinguish between the parameters by the numbers. Anyway, that's it for this video. Please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of any updates. Thanks for watching and happy mixing.